One thing I love about Flash on the Pine Phone is how easy it is to either develop or port apps. So today, I'm going to show you two methods of quickly developing an app for Flash in less than 10 minutes. Let's get into it. So for this video, I'm going to be using Python as the language for cho of choice since it is very easy to learn and if you uh, know any other programming languages, you should be able to easily understand Python's syntax. So yeah. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you two methods to develop apps for Flash. Uh, this will let you develop uh, applications for post-market OS with Flash, Mobian, PureOS, and any other Linux distribution for the client phone that runs uh, Flash. Now, usually, before I build apps, I like to design what I want the app to look like uh, on either pen or paper or using Graphic Designer so that I have a clear design that I want to follow when I'm programming the app. So I busted out Graphic Designer and made a quick design for this WeGet app we're going to make. So this app will just let you download files, just a demo app, basic, pretty basic. I'm not going to add that many features. So yeah, we're going to start with the harder method first and work our way to the easier method. First thing we're going to do is create a new Python app from scratch. So uh, when I did this earlier, it took me about seven minutes plus about two minutes to fix some stupid syntax errors I made after I recorded that part and I turned that into a simple Flash app. The way this works is first we have to import the gobject introspection library for Python, and then import GDK, which is our graphical toolkit, and GIO, which we will use to make a subprocess later, which a subprocess allows us to talk to WeGet, basically. Then we created a new class, and we created the init uh, def function. So basically, when you run this class, it creates a window takes everything we add to the window, and then when I run the program, it creates the window with this line of code, shows the window, and then runs GDK. I created a box here, and I put, uh, I made a label, another label, a button, a uh, text box, and another label, and then here I basically put all of the widgets I just made into the box. This line of code connects when the button gets clicked over to these functions over here, which can, which talk to WeGet and help you download files using WeGet. So this opens a subprocess and asks WeGet to download a file using the URL bar inside of the Xbox, which is this line of code right here. And then changes the status label to say that it's downloading the file, waits for it to finish, and then puts done. So yeah, it's a pretty basic application, only about 50 lines of code, but Think about it, I made a fully functional app for Fosh with only 50 lines of code. That, imagine if I was trying to make the same thing in, as an Android app, it would take a lot more lines of code. So it is very easy to develop Fosh apps, even when you do the harder method. One nice thing about developing GDK apps is if you're on a Linux desktop, uh, you don't even have to load it on your phone, you can just run the window, and as long as it sort of has the same aspect ratio and everything as a uh, phone, uh, we basically get the full, whoops, we basically get the full experience right here of what we would have gotten if I was running this on a phone. So later we will test both the apps we're going to make uh, on uh, Pine Phone using Mobi and Linux. Uh, however, for the meantime, while we're just testing everything, we can run it on our desktop as a desktop window. So that's pretty cool. The next method we're going to be using is something called Glade. Next up, we're going to be using Glade for the easier method. Now, when I created this program, this pretty much the same program with Glade, it took me about six minutes, plus again, uh, two more minutes to fix syntax errors. So really, we only saved about one minute uh, doing the Glade method. However, even though it did take a little bit longer, it's still an easier method if you don't know that much what you're doing. Although it can be a little bit harder to debug, so if you have an error, it could be a little bit longer to figure out the error. So basically, we use this program called Glade to make the GUI, and from here, we made the box again, we added our labels, our entry, our button, and our status label. And then we gave them, we gave all of the ones that we need to talk to in the program, we gave them all IDs right here. So uh, this one has the entry ID. If we go to this button, this one has just the button ID, and then this one says status. And we saved, we can save this Glade file. It's basically just a glorified XML file. And then we can import a GDK builder 
and import our GUID file, which basically tells the builder uh, what everything is. So if I open the GUID file, it has all of the properties and everything that we made in GUID, and it basically imports it into our program right here. And then it gets the main window object from GUID and puts it in the program. And then it also gets the status entry and button access, or button objects, I mean, so that we can access them in our code later. So then we connect this button to our function right here. And yeah. So again, if we run this, we're gonna get basically the same result as we did earlier. This is the wrong one, I have to do goid.py. But yeah, we basically have the same result as we did earlier. It's only slightly different because I obviously remade it from scratch using a different program for designing the UI. But uh, overall, it is pretty similar, basically the same app. Um, and yeah, so you can uh, build apps with GUID if you want more what you see is what you get interface for building the apps. So if you're more into designing than you are into programming, this is a way you can build an app using GUID. Now, one nice thing about uh, GDK is that since a lot of Linux desktop apps are made using GDK, uh, it's really easy to port a Linux desktop app to a Pine Phone in Fosh by making it adaptive. So basically you have to take that uh, large window uh, interface you have and just cram it down to a phone and then it will work. In order to do this, you need to do something called making the app adaptive. So to do this, we can use the live handy framework to make some UI elements that don't scale well, be able to scale down to a phone size. So uh, thanks Heroism for uh, live handy, it's very useful. So. If you basically make the interface work on a smaller screen using Live Handy and everything, then your app will be able to work on a phone. And not only does making your app adaptive make it helpful to run on a phone screen, but also if I resize an app on a desktop, now it uh, works better and sort of scales down to fit uh, your desktop. So that is a nice thing because not only does it help with the phone, but it also helps the desktop UI if the window's small. So we can see this from GNOME settings, as well as we have Lollipop Music Player. Uh, this can scale down to be sort of a phone-like UI. So yeah, it can help smaller windows be smaller on your desktop. So that's pretty nice. Now, if you're interested, uh, here's, I'll put a clip on screen of both the apps working on the Pine phone. Um, it, it, one thing that does need to be fixed with Linux mobile on Fosh um, is that it's there isn't really one way to package apps. There's flat packs, devs, and everything. So if you're on post market OS, a dev won't work, but also the flat packs are very buggy on Fosh. So hopefully in the future that will be fixed, and maybe uh, flat packs will be fixed on phones, and then we'll just have like a mutual standard to use flat packs on phones. So it does take a little bit more work to package your app because you have to package it for post-market OS as a dev package, as a flat pack, all of these packages you have to make. And most of the time, like for devs, you have to be on a Debian distro and for post-market OS, you have to be on Alpine Linux. So packaging is kind of an issue right now for building Fosh apps, but building the app itself is extremely easy. Now, if this video has gotten you interested in writing GDK apps for Fosh, then I'll show you some places you can uh, learn to program GDK apps using Python. The New Boston has a really great tutorial series on how to create GDK apps without GUID inside of Python, and IT Dominator has a series on how to write GDK apps with Python and with GUID. There's also this really useful guide on uh, Python GDK. It kind of gives you some of the basics, and then from after you've learned that, you can look at the documentation to figure it out. I will say, though, that this guide is more of a starting guide than a permanent reference though because there are a lot of code that is out of date and deprecated so do keep that in mind it's more of a starting guide on just how to figure out how to use gobject than it is a actual like permanent reference but if you do want a permanent reference check out this gobject api reference guide i use this guide so often when developing gdk apps uh, if i don't know how to use a function i just pull it up on there and figure out the parameters figure out what it returns and it's very easy to learn of course, all of this is assuming you already know Python. If you don't know Python, you obviously have to learn Python first. Luckily though, YouTube has tons of great Python guides to help you get started. 
Python is one of the easiest programming languages to learn, so once you learn the syntax and basic class-based programming, you will easily be able to figure out how to create FOSH apps using Python and GDK just by reading the documentation. So yeah, anyways, that was the video. Thanks for watching this video. Thanks to patrons Michelle Fantino, Sam Covet, and Jim Peters. Also, if you're on YouTube, please sign up for LBRY, which is a decentralized YouTube alternative that's blockchain-based. If you sign up, then I get some crypto for from it, and you get some crypto from it. So yeah, I'll see you in the next video.